It's that time of year again, guys. Um, I've done some remodeling to my game room, and I've got it set up uh, better. I've got a couple extra shelving units. I was able to uh, separate my games a little bit better than uh, than last year. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started and show you part one to my game room tour 2017. Here is my Atari collection. Right up here is where I keep my 5200 box games. I got uh, Popeye and Frogger there. Those are the uh, Parker Brothers games. Uh, and then it goes right on into 2600 games starting with MASH. <laughs> that Source of Apprentice. That one box isn't real easy to find. Fast food. Uh, we've got these Frogo games there. Kind of interesting. Tapeworm, coconuts. Then we have the M Network games. You see right there. Now what that is? Those are the uh, Mattel branded games that came out for the uh, Intellivision. So these were the copies that they made to work in the 2600, which they pretty much just look like Intellivision games with an adapter, which you'll see in a little bit. There's my rare. Two pack or double ender artillery duel with ghost matter. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you see you uh, would have recently saw when I picked that up. ET. Some consider that to be the worst game ever made and uh, partially responsible for Atari's demise during the uh, big game crash. All right. You got some uh, games here. Right, and then we have my Activision box Atari games going all the way to Star Master and after that we have these black box Sears telegames these were slightly harder to uh, come by uh, these were sold at Sears during the day back when uh, um, Atari was being copied by other major retailers and apparently there was uh, you, you could do that back then you, you, you really can't do that today keyboard controller for specific game Star Raiders with the Star with the uh, special paddle controller. Some more stuff there, and just here's some extra stuff. Random Rainbow Six up there. Okay, uh, Gremlins and Frogger for the 5200. Uh, that's a complete Star Trek for the 2600, and a Moon Sweeper for the ColecoVision. Second row. Sorry, it's kind of at a weird angle, but I've got. This is in the corner, and I've got something behind my, my camera. I can't really uh, get behind it. Uh, we got Hunt and Score going through Blackjack, Surround Invaders, uh, Space Invaders, I mean. And a hard to get box basic math. Basic math goes for about $5 loose, but in the box, uh, I've seen them go as much as 100 bucks. I got that part of a lot some time ago. Um, really good deal back when uh, Atari was really, really easy and cheap. I mean, they still are, you know, fairly cheap for Atari. Box Superman. That was pretty cool looking. Pac-Man. We got a Phaser Patrol right there. That Phaser Patrol is a supercharger game, as you can see there. Now, what that was is you plugged it into your Atari, and it had a plug on it that you would plug into a portable tape deck. And the games, uh, the game actually in there is a cassette game, and you could buy cassettes for it and play those games that way. All right, these silver ones are my 7800 box games. Now the 7800 was uh, supposed to go head to head with the NES. It was an 8-bit system, uh, full backwards compatibility with the 2600 games. But uh, it didn't do well at all, and that's 
during yeah it's just the whole that whole thing was a wreck un unfortunately i was one of the few people few kids that i knew that uh got that system when it came out my grandma had picked it up for me mainly because it played the old games i only had a handful of uh 7800 games when that came out all right we'll go to the other atari game since i'm just doing atari right now all right so we got some of these four games on the left there those are uh Spectrovision, yeah. And those ones right there with these guys here, those are iMagic. All their cartridges look like that. This London Blitz, that's uh, actually done by Avalon Hill. Ghost Manor, Minor 429er. Alright, we got some more here. Just, just some more of the random titles. These are like all the movie titles there, uh, movie related titles, um, TV series. There's MASH, uh, which you saw earlier just a second ago. And we got these weird blue ones here. Go down. We've got the Threshold. Some other guys there. Gorf. Solar Fox, not Star Fox. Beanie Bopper. And then we got some cool ones here. We got Ghostbusters Kung Fu Master, which is Kung Fu for the uh, Atari, but this is uh, the original version of it. Double Dragon. We got some Winter Games, Summer Games. Here's the Coleco Loose Games. And some more Activision games. At some point, they started making the, making the games with these blue labels. I really don't know much about that and why they went that direction. All right, we got Hero. That's uh, one of the better games for the system. Uh, still, you know, you'll find out on eBay and whatnot, you know, prices for that usually float around 30, 30 bucks for that game. Sequest Chopper Command, fantastic game from my original collection back, you know, when they came out. Um, those, are, those are the same ones. California games, I just picked that up. Beam Rider. Pitfall 2, that game is going up in value right now. Um, not sure why. I didn't realize it was that rare. Got some Sesame Street, Ernie, Big Bird. Got some Pigs in Space, another Sorcerer's Apprentice. This is my original Sorcerer's Apprentice. I bought this from some kid on the bus for 50 cents. Uh, I want to say probably 6th grade or something like that. Now these brownish labels here, these reddish brown labels, um, this is these are the games that were released when the Atari released the Junior System. Um, it was it was almost just like how Nintendo brought out the uh, smaller systems once the new system was out. So uh, the Junior came out; it was a smaller version of the Atari, and then they just released the games in these. And some of these games, like the BMX, in this particular game box is worth is you know top three most valuable games on the system very hard to find some more stuff get a couple of pac mans i don't know why i have two up there but more et yay and then yeah that's that's it for that and then right up top here i got some more got some halloween texas chainsaw Got a double under right there. Got some of these games, all the Star Wars games, Qbert Frogger, Popeye. And like I was saying earlier, this is a Gim Network game. Let me get it out of there. So you can see the adapter that they put on the that they made for it so it would work in the Atari. And this here. This is one of the Atari uh, porn games. This is Custer's Revenge from the Swedish Erotica series. Interesting game. Uh, if you wanted to learn more about that game, just check out ABGN's Atari porn video. You will see everything you ever, never needed to know about Atari porn. All right, 7800. Got Asteroids for 7800. Uh, Pete Rose Baseball. Pole position. This came with all the systems. Uh, I don't think it came with every one, but a majority of the system of the uh, 700s came with pole position too. There we 
have it there. Decent games. Um, Kurataka, that's a really good game. Oh, and up here, APF games for the MP1000. I only have, I have three of these, and then I have four more uh, box, which I'll get to. And then right here, these are Vectrex games. A whole bunch of those. Okay, now we're ColecoVision. So this is all my ColecoVision games, besides the one I have boxed. Um, you see Atari started putting out their games. Again, stuff that they had for their system. They put out in this system, uh, the Intellivision and whatnot. And there's, I really like the end labels on these. I like how it's very uniform. It's all black and it just has the logo, or it just has the logo for the game. Um, I really thought that was a nice touch. It looked, it looked nice. A little bit nicer and cleaner than the Atari. And my most valuable games for the system. I got Beat 'em and Eat 'em, another one of the uh, Swedish Erotica's uh, Bachelor Party. Death Trap, which that one's not real expensive. That's more along the lines around 25 bucks. And then Out of Control, this is a very rare game for the system. Um, I know this one was more expensive. I got a really good deal on it because it was sitting in uh, uh, the store. I picked it up for, for a long time. But the rarity is like, I want to say number 14. 14 most rarest game for the system. I'm not 100% positive on that because that kind of stuff changes all the time. All right, I got Minds of Minos. Pretty rare game. Uh, not worth a ton but uh, I found that at uh, the game on expo and then cakewalk this is a very hard to find game uh, fairly valuable um, if you notice with these cartridges they're a lot longer than your basic Atari cartridges as you can see if I put it up next to this it's got a good inch on it but uh, these are the only two games I've seen physically uh, by the by this company uh, comma bid I guess I'm saying that right but uh, yeah, I've not seen another one. And last but not least, Cubert's Cubes. Uh, that's an expensive game. I got this from my buddy Retro Remix Nation um, when we were down selling games at the uh, Game On Expo uh, on, in 2016. So that was a really cool item to get for my collection. And then River Patrol. I just picked this up recently. All right, now we're moving on to my Magnavox Odyssey collection. Uh, those top three titles there in the blue, those are made for to, for use with the uh, voice modulator that you plugged into the top of it. I've never used it. That I actually still need the voice uh, modulator for my system. I'm the, I just need that and two more games. I will have a complete uh, Odyssey 2 collection. And, uh, uh, they're not easy to find. Uh, of course, since everything else is boxed, I'm trying to find a copy of the voice box, and it's really rough. I can find them loose all over the place, but in a box, uh, it's a little bit harder. All right, and we have the Challenger series. Now, these Challenger series up here with the blue band on the top, these are some of the more rare games. Uh, Power Lords being the rarest game on the whole system. Uh, Turtles, Killer Bees, both uh, very rare games. Uh, P.T. Barnum's, a little bit. And then you get to, like, Casey's, uh, Casey's Crazy Chase, not not very rare. It's really, actually fairly easy to find. And then uh, Smithereens. And then we go to the other challenge series here with the blue band on the bottom, which these came out before these. I don't know why they changed the level on where they put the uh, band. So there's all that. All right, and then these here, I'll show you this one. These are the Parker Brother games that came out. Uh, we didn't get these here. So these are actually Brazilian, I believe. But uh, they work in our systems. And then here's the three big box games. These are like the these are like the board games. They, they come with a board. They come with game pieces, the cartridge. Uh, I've never played them. 
two uh, Atari Lynx games, still sealed. I can't remember what I bought with those, but they were very cheap. Apparently those are two of the cheapest games you can get for the system, especially sealed. Alright, moving on to Atari Jaguar. This is my Jaguar collection. All box. We got Doom up there. That's a pretty good copy of Doom. Kasumi Ninja. Uh, they were trying to make a fighting game similar to Mortal Kombat by adding fatalities. Uh, some of the fatalities are ridiculous. The gameplay is not the best. It's not really a very good game, but it is fun <laughs> in some aspects that if you can actually figure out how to do the fatalities, they are amusing to watch. All right, here's my Atari 400-800 cartridges. Just picked up Frogger 2 not that long ago. This one here, this is an Atari XC game. This is actually the game that came with the system, which you'll, you'll end up seeing that later. The red games are Fisher-Price games, and then we got some there. Not real exciting. I haven't really messed with any of those yet. I do have an 800, but I'll have to plug it in sometime to check it out. All right, here's my... Uh, Bear Child Channel F collection. Um, I'd like to one day get every cartridge, but there's some cartridges that are extremely hard to find and very expensive. For some reason, six and seven are really hard to come by and they want a pretty penny for them. So I don't know why. Maybe it's just the game. You know, I don't really know. So I've got them all up to 17, missing, you know, a couple here or there. 15, I'm missing six, seven, and 15, it looks like. So that's that for my Fairchild. And then these here, these are more MP1000 games. All the packaging is generic. It's all the same. They just put the game in the cup in the front. Um, I guess that's a was a fairly easy way to uh, mass produce these without having to change the uh, cover art on each one. Those are very, very hard to come by. Um, the system itself is extremely hard to come by as well. So if you are going to try to collect for that, patience, patience, patience. I'm, and usually you can get a good deal on it because not very many people know that system exists. All right, and this is my GameCom collection. I am trying to go for a complete GameCom. I'm only missing three games right now. No, four games. Four games, I believe. Okay. I got Monopoly here. And there's, there's Scrabble, Frogger, and Centipede. And those... They're not hard to get, they, but they range around 20 bucks a piece, and I'm trying to find it for cheaper because it's Gamecom. This is a more expensive game. This Monopoly is actually really not that easy to come by, and when it does pop up, you know, it goes for a little bit more. All right, and here's some sealed games here. Resident Evil 2, that was the first game I ever picked up. I only picked it up because I was collecting everything Resident Evil. This one's actually open, as you can kind of see. I just I cut the top open on it. Oh. Believe me, it is. <laughs> so I could see the uh, cartridge back then. Another one of the hardest games to get on the system, the uh, Quiz Whiz. Not easy to come by. I got a deal on that. And then here's some open games still with the box. And some ex these are extra boxes I came across. And this here, I got this. I got a lot of these from uh, Black Box Games. And they were traded in by a friend of mine named Josh. And he had this in there, Wheel of Fortune 2, the, the, the booklet. This is going to be the hardest game to find. I have been on eBay at least a couple times a week looking for that game. Just anybody selling it. Nobody's selling it. If any of you out there have it, um, preferably in the box, let me know. And if you're willing to sell it, let me know. I will, I will make you an offer. Okay. And real quick, I got some games in between here just because I'm out of room. There's some Sega Game Gear games, nothing exciting. A couple uh, Super Famicom, Star Fox, and this one's SimCity. F1 Race for the Game Boy. Uh, select a game, Pac-Man 2 for the Select a Game console, which is another extremely hard to find game. Or, yeah, not game, but game system. Very hard to find game system. And we got Sculptor's Cut, the now Holy Grail game for the system. Still has the Blockbuster sticker over it. This game is in fairly good condition. Got that for a pretty good deal at uh, Zia Records. 
All right, and since we're at 64, I'll show you my loose 64 stuff. So these aren't in, al in alphabetical order right now. I just kind of threw them in there. I just started putting these end labels on so um, they're easier to see what I have. Plus, I've got the end labels right there. Plus, I can keep track because I am trying to go for a full set and having all those end labels uh, really kind of helps show me what I have and don't have. There we go. Got a lot of the hard to get games, luckily. Like Worms there, that's that's not easy to come by. Bomberman 64, uh, Super Bowling, Harvest Moon, I just picked that up. And the Super Mario 64 is a not for resale. And picked this up from Retro Remix Nation as well. This is the Master Quest that somebody put on a Nintendo 64 cartridge. Just some Pixel Pals there and a Super Famicom Super Game Boy. All right, so here is so here is my boxed Nintendo 64 stuff. Starting at the beginning with Aiden Chronicles, we got the Castlevania games, which I really enjoy the Castlevania games. A lot of people hate on them, uh, but I think they're the better 3D games out of the out of all the ones that have come out, being that they're not repetitive. Uh, they don't feel repetitive at all, unlike the PS2 ones going on. They, those ones felt repetitive. Gameplay was good on them, but I just I had more fun with those. If you can get past the camera and the controls, uh, those games are pretty decent. Conker's Bad Fur Day. Uh, got some Doom, Duke Nukem, Gauntlet. A lot of these games I bought when they came out, and these are my original boxes, everything. The Zeldas bought those when they came out. Uh, one of these is the collector's edition, and one's just the uh, basic copy. Mario Party's Mega Man. We got Pokemon Stadium, Ogre Battle. Picked that up on a Craigslist deal. Got a pretty good deal. Actually, I got a big uh, lot of stuff, and that was included. Resident Evil 2, uh, as far as I'm concerned, before the Dreamcast was launched, this was the best version of that game. Very clear uh, game for the system. They did a good job with it. It was sharp. Um, plus, it was one if one of the only, if not the only, um, game for the system that had full motion video. The, all the full motion video that was on the uh, PS1 version is on there. Star Fox, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, one of my all-time favorite Star Wars games fantastic game again it doesn't have the best controls but you know it was it, it came out towards the beginning of the uh, system so the Turox I love Turok 1 I wish it had a multiplayer because it's my favorite of the four and then War Gods all right let's move on to my Super Nintendo got a couple controller box controllers got Act Razor Breath of Fire Dracula this is a uh, reproduction cartridge I got from uh, Russia Remix Nation. Uh, he picked it up at, um, I think it was the first time we went to the Game On Expo. He uh, picked it up from a vendor there. Chrono Trigger. Demon's Crest. Uh, another game just keeps going up in value. Donkey Kong. These were two of my original games I bought when they came out. I picked this one up at Luna Games over in San Diego. So a lot of you might be familiar with that, being that it's the store that Ian Ferguson works at that's on the podcast with Pat the NES Punk. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 Zelda. Yeah, my Legend of Zelda, my original copy. It's in really good shape. Mystic Quest. Illusion of Gaia, one of my all-time favorite games. This game is fantastic. If you've not played it, play it. It only runs for about 20 bucks. It's worth every penny. Killer Instinct. And we have Monopoly. That was just, I don't know how I got that. Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. One of my favorite fighting games of all time. So I bought those when they when they came out. Literally the day that they launched, I went to the store and bought those. Ogre Battle. I just put this up there. It, I don't even think it has a game in it. I don't know where I got that. Secret of Evermore, Secret of Mana, good game. Soul Blazer, fantastic game. SimCity, one of the most addicting games I've ever played. Of course, the original Star Fox, good game. Super Metroid, I bought that when it came out. Um, 
another game that's just worth a ton of money now and it's not that it's rare it's that it's a really good game this is a fantastic game if any of you are into pinball games super pinball behind the mask has three pinball tables uh it's got great music uh i don't know it's just it's a really fun pinball game and I, I really enjoy it i can play it all the time all right and that's it for my box games let's move on to my loose games that i have uh, cases made for now actually this is empty because i ended up buying the case for it or the actual box as you saw up there and i moved the, moved the uh, game out of it i don't know why it's still there i think i'm waiting to put another cover in so i can put another loose game in there Castle, Super Castlevania 4, one of my, that is my absolute favorite game for the system. And it's my favorite Castlevania game. So if you haven't played that, play it. Dracula X, not a bad game. Uh, not very easy to come by. Clock Tower, that is a reproduction cartridge since we never got it here, but it is in English. Uh, pre pretty cool game. Earthbound Evo. Evo is a fantastic game. Again, that's another game that's worth way too much money. Um, so if you can emulate it to play it, at least do that so you can, you know, check it out. Some more games I picked up to Zelda games that are uh, Parallel Worlds and Goddess of Wisdom. The Mega Man 7, X1, X2, X3. Just picked up Pocket and Rocky. Trying to get my hands on Pocket and Rocky too, but again, that's a super expensive game. So I'm look, trying to look for a deal or maybe find it at a game store where I can trade stuff. Radical Dreamers, for any of you that don't know what that is, this is essentially uh, Chrono Cross. Uh, before Chrono Cross was Chrono Cross. It's all the same characters. It's more of like a text adventure. Sunset Riders, good game. Super Adventure Island 2, fantastic game. Very much like uh, Zelda 2, Adventures of Link. Definitely try that game if you can. Turtles game, Terra Enigma. I'm playing this one right now. We never got this here, unfortunately, but this is part three to the Illusion of Gaia uh, series. So Soul Blazer came first, then Illusion of Gaia, then Terra Enigma. Uh, really good game. I'm still not done with it, and I've played this game longer than I played those other two. And it's still going so i don't know when the end's gonna happen but uh, hopefully soon i can beat it all right guys that's the end of part one uh my next part i'll i will go through and show you my nes games and my game boy games and whatnot all right so thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on my next my upcoming collection video thanks bye